Good morning and welcome back. Well, every October, schools and organizations across the country observe National Bullying Prevention Month. And joining us this morning from Gunderson Health System is child and family therapist Jeff Ryland to talk a little bit about this. Jeff, thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Uh, so this is, as we mentioned, something we talk about year after year. Jeff, what are some of the trends you're seeing with bullying? Well, I don't think it's changing. I don't think it's getting less, unfortunately. And I think that what happens in schools is often a, re a reflection of what's happening in our society. And of course, this last few months, we've seen a lots of uh, lots of angry people, lots of frustration, mm -hmm. lots of po around the politics. And I think that you know, schools are really um, they're really mirrors of, of our greater society. And so I think we've actually seen some increases in just mean behavior. Uh, at least that's been anecdotally reported around the country, and, and that may be a reflection of how our politics are going, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I want to talk a bit about the bully itself, you know, the stereotypical yeah. kind of bully we see in movies and, and comic strips, and that, that stereotypical bully isn't really exactly what is happening now, and that the person who is bullying obviously has a lot of issues that they're dealing with themselves as well. That's true, and I think that we need to move away from that perception, that stereotype, if you will, that bullies are these little muscle-bound, angry kids from the wrong side of the tracks or whatever perception we have, because we really there are three different kinds of bullying. There's the physical bullying, which is the most obvious. That's the hitting, pushing, shoving, spitting, and then the verbal bullying, the name-calling, uh, the the laughing at and making fun of other kids. And then what's probably grown more than anything is called social bullying. It's, yeah. it's, getting other, it's alienating other kids, it's isolating other kids. And that one, along with verbal bullying in particular, can be done with social media. That you can, you can rather than kids being in school for just ha six or seven hours having to deal with being bullied, they can have that experience now 24-7. And you can reach so many more people with a tweet or through Facebook, other media. And, and that really has become a significant problem because bullying is really about power. It's about kids inappropriately yeah. using power over others. Yeah, and Jeff, we're running out of time here. But real quick, what would you say to somebody or the parents of a kid who is being bullied right now? What would be your quick advice to them? I would, I would encourage parents to listen to their children, to first validate their experience, and, and, and not to say you've got it all right, because very often children who say that they're being bullied may not have, um, may not be sharing all the information. There might be more to the story, as there often is, but say, boy, you must be, I'm, I'm really sorry that this happened for you. You're feeling really upset or frustrated. How can we solve this problem? Can we involve the teacher? Can we involve the school counselor? I think it's very important for parents, especially, to validate or to listen to their children and to help them problem solve what to do, not to go off angry themselves, mm -hmm. but rather to approach this in a very methodical and thoughtful way to teach kids how to problem solve. Right. Yeah. Jeff, thanks for being here. We appreciate the time you took this morning. Thanks again. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too.